this here. And then we're just going to pour this in over oh, your I cucumbers. See. Mm -hmm. And you are going to then um, stir this. Okay. I'll put it over here. And, and okay, stir we're going to put it here. We're going to stir it up. Mm -hmm. And then um, you could hypothetically go ahead and eat this now, mm -hmm. and it would it would taste it would taste pretty good. Okay. But what people really love is the flavor of after about four hours or so in the refrigerator oh, or see. overnight. So I have to refrigerate it now. So you want to refrigerate it now. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll um, do that. And then, uh, or you know, it would stay good in your fridge for up to a week. What? So well, yes, that's good it gets, to know. Uh, it, the, the uh, cucumbers get a little softer, mm -hmm. but the flavor intensifies. Okay, I'll put it in the refrigerator and be All right, right back. We now have another side for our early summer menu, and here's the finished product. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. this is my summer loving corn, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's this wonderful sort of sweet and smoky corn. Um, so we have a couple tablespoons, two tablespoons of butter in uh, melting. We're melting, okay. Uh, we want to keep the heat pretty low because we don't want the butter to take on color, nor the onions oh, or I the see. peppers. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add. Um, this is a half of a large Vidalia onion. Mm. I love I like the Vidalias. I, I like love Vidalias because they're mm. they're nice and sweet. I see they're coming in season. I see them now at the store. Mm -hmm. So it depends, you know, on the size of whatever you get. If you get a small dinky one, use the whole thing. If you get a huge mm -hmm. bad mama jama, use half. Okay. Um, this is a, a whole small poblano pepper. Same mm -hmm. sort of deal. If you end up with a big honkin' pepper, yes. um, just use half of it or a quarter mm -hmm. of it, depending upon how big mm -hmm. it is. Um, poblano is generally pretty mild in is spice. It? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, give a nice flavor. It gives it a nice sort of smoky mm -hmm. flavor. Um, I recommend that if you're making this at home, mm -hmm. um, bite off a little piece while you're cutting it um, to see how spicy it is. All right. And then you can kind of decide how much you want. Oh, okay. Sometimes you get occasional errant, really hot, yeah. spicy poblano. So it's good to, ch good to check. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, the seeds have been removed before I cut oh, it. Oh, OK. So that's um, good. Sometimes the seeds can be really spicy, and there's like an oil kind of coating mm -hmm. on the seeds. So you want to make sure you wash your hands right, um, before we after. get started. Well, that too. But you also <laughs> want to make sure that you wash your hands after you after handle too, the poblano, yeah. because if you touch your eye or mm. other sensitive skin, um, it, mm. can, it can be painful. Or if you have like a cut somewhere. Mm -hmm. It could be pretty painful, even though it's not particularly okay. spicy. So now what do we add? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cook this until mm -hmm. our um, our onions are translucent. So we can mm -hmm. turn up the temperature a little bit. A little bit, okay. Um, and then what will we add? And then what we're going to add is we're going to add, this is uh, uh, four ears of corn. Mm -hmm. And I've taken it off the cob, as you can see. Yes. Um, now, I recommend, so you can either use fresh corn and take it off the cob. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can use frozen. Either is fine. Either way is okay. Either way is okay. But mm -hmm. I recommend tasting a kernel. Even You can even try it raw before you cook with it to see oh, how really? sweet your corn is. Mm. Um, and you can um, you can add sugar if it's not you if there's no that, natural huh? sweetness. You can add a little bit of sugar to it. Mm -hmm. And actually, with this, I I did add just a, little, a little, like one sugar. teaspoon of sugar. That's yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Because yeah, you you don't want your corn to be cloyingly sweet, but you yeah. um, you do want some sweetness in your All corn. Right. All right. So now, All right, put so these now in. we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put our mm. corn in. Okay. All right. Mm, this always makes me think of summer corn. Yes. <laughs> oh, the eastern shore corn is the best. Is it? Mm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, okay. Every so year. And so when you put this. your corn in, you're going <laughs> to add another tablespoon of butter. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to cook this down. You, mm -hmm. This is when you would um, add your, you can also add salt. Right. Uh, you can add salt during the uh, onion cooking phase as well. All right. Um, or you can add it now. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, one more item there. And then, um, then we have our parsley. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
or sorry, not parsley, cilantro. Cilantro, yeah. Parsley's brother. <laughs> but I was thinking about this, actually. Some people really do not like cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can you use can parsley. You can use parsley, but today that's we're why using that cilantro. My head. But today we are going with cilantro okay. because it's really tasty. Okay. All right, so once this is cooked, mm -hmm. we can go ahead and turn it off the heat. Okay. And uh, you want to turn off the heat before you add your cilantro. Oh, I turned it off. And okay. you just sprinkle your cilantro. Oh, now that's in. so colorful, isn't it's it? Very pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this can be eaten. Uh, it can be eaten hot. It can be eaten cold. It can be eaten room temp. Mm -hmm. um, I like the flavors mm -hmm. for all three. Um, and this is a finished product. That's right? the finished product. Beautiful. And um, it just it goes really well with so many things. So what do we have next? Um, next, we are going to do our sweet and smoky steak. Sounds good. Be right back. The recipes we're making on today's show will be available on my website, that's chefsrecipes.org. Now we're going to do some grilling indoors, yes. but you can also do it outdoors. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is um, my sweet and, sweet and smoky steak. Mm -hmm. um, and what we are going to be doing is we are going to be combining um, different types of pastes. Oh, um, right. These are Korean. These are again. Um, if you go to like an H Mart or international food store, mm -hmm. this is seasoned soybean paste. And, oh, I see. Um, yeah. So um, I use more of this than the red pepper paste in my mm -hmm. um, my version of this. But if you like heat, you can reverse the recipe and use more. Uh, red pepper paste so than the seasoned the bean. Influence this is death. Asian. Mm. This is a Korean paste, um, mm -hmm. and but it's also got Latin influence because we're going to be using some cumin oh, as so well. It's a combination. Combination. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. about just a little bit of that spicy red bean paste, the mm -hmm. spicy red pepper paste. Um, we putting sugar. Right. And it's going to seem like a lot of sugar, but that it gives it a really nice You're caramelization. Using, the brown sugar, huh? using yeah. sugar in the raw mm -hmm. um, just makes it forms like a nice crust on the steak. Okay. So um, I just happen to have some sea salt, mm -hmm. so I'm using that instead of kosher salt on the recipe. I put kosher salt, but this is smoked sea salt, so. Mm -hmm. um, it's fine if you use just kosher salt or this, just a bigger flake salt is good. Yeah, I see there's a bigger crystals there. Bigger mm -hmm. crystals. And this has just got, this has got nice flavor. Mm -hmm. But not something that most people have laying around. So, so it's what is kosher it? salt's fine. This is cumin. Cumin, I like cumin. I mm. love cumin. Mm, that is a good taste um, to it. And so we're just gonna kind of give this a stir. Mm -hmm. And so it's this kind of like in between space between a dry rub and almost oh, like a marinade kind I of thing. See, right. So, so what kind of steak do we have here? This is fajita cut. This is flap meat. Mm -hmm. um, you can also use flank steak or really any other cut. Uh, this is actually, I've already cleaned this up, but as you can mm -hmm. see, there's still some fat and some connective tissue, which mm -hmm. you have to leave enough on so it you stays do. in one piece, but you right. want to take off as much as you can without mm -hmm. it falling apart. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you don't want to be bothered with um, having to do a lot of trimming, I'd mm -hmm. recommend going flank steak over fajita. You like flank steak. I, uh, flank steak's delicious. Mm -hmm. um, however, this is much more economical. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not quite like half the amount of flank mm -hmm. steak, but... Um, so then you're going to come in. So it's like a rub there. It's a rub. So you're going to rub this. Mm -hmm. And so what you would want to do is you would either do this, like if you were going to do this for a picnic or a mm -hmm. barbecue in the evening, you would do it in the morning or you do it before you go to bed the night before. Oh, so that it can stay on so a while. Can, so mm -hmm. it can stay on in a while. So it doesn't take much time. Um, mm -hmm. So then you would put it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pretend that we have that you've already done, done that. that right? <laughs> and then... Okay. Then I have our little grill pan You have our heated. grill pan. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of fat to our grill pan. Okay. And we can kind of move that around. We can, you can either put your oil on a, 
paper towel and then rub oh, it in your pee. That's a good Something idea. like this. If you were out on an outdoor, outdoor grill, grill, you wouldn't want to do would that. Make it, yeah. uh, you wouldn't want to pour your oil directly on the grill. <laughs> but you would but put it on the grill. Can, mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you were using like a frying pan or something, you mm -hmm. could do it like this. So. Mm -hmm. We're just trying oh, to. That smells good. That's sesame oil. So that's then. sesame oil. Mm -hmm. Not a super high smoking point. It doesn't have to be sesame oil. Does it? No. Um, if you make the salad, if you mm -hmm. if you make the salad um, from today's recipe, so we're going to pretend that this has been in the fridge. Okay. And uh, so we want this to be a pretty high heat. Our our, our grill high. is pretty hot, mm -hmm. um, which is good. And then we're mm -hmm. just going to go directly in our grill. Oh yeah, there's, oh, that, there's sizzle. that sizzle. Oh. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. That's what I like mm -hmm. to hear. So then, um, what we're looking for is to form that nice crust. Mm -hmm. On the uh, on on both sides both of the sides. steak, okay. so it just depends upon the thickness of your meat mm -hmm. and uh, how well you like it done. Mm -hmm. This steak um, took about two and a half minutes that's each all side, did and that's all it did. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You can use a meat thermometer if that makes you feel more comfortable. Yeah, I see. Uh, you just wanna you wanna stop cooking. You wanna take it off the heat before mm -hmm. it reaches all the way up to the temperature looking for. I see. So I stopped when that hit about 140, I pulled it off because I know it was going to continue to cook as it right. rested. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to peek. Oh, I see. That's so nice. we can Real see marks. Uh -huh. for, the, for the sake of TV, yeah. we'll go ahead and flip this. I see there's some nice grill marks there. So as you can see, that's some mm. nice caramelization. Mm -hmm. That's the Maillard effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you prefer yours medium? I like mine actually medium rare. I you like do? it still pink in the middle, mm -hmm. um, but everyone has their own. Uh, you can always cook it more. Yeah. It's so right. that's <laughs> sort of that's sort of how I operate. You can always cook it more. Mm -hmm. um, if you're having a party or something, mm -hmm. you go for sort of medium and then people want it more well, make sure that they get their well done or right. medium well pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. then what but it's, um, so then once this is done, you pull mm -hmm. it off, you let it rest for one third of the total amount of cooking time. Oh, all right. So for, if, for something that only takes five minutes, you gotta let it rest for approximately a little less than two minutes. So it's mm -hmm. not too long of a wait. Mm -hmm. And then you slice it up and like that. And then you can slice it up. Mm -hmm. And this is delicious hot, it's delicious cold. It makes a really great steak salad. You can put it in with salad. Great, for outdoor cooking. Mm -hmm. Like you say, if you want to do it indoors. Fabulous, mm -hmm. yes. Nice for the summertime. Mm -hmm. And that's it, huh? All right, so. We'll be right back, and what will we have next? Uh, we were going to do our herbed watermelon salad. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Watermelons are coming in season now, Jennifer. Yes, I've they seen are. them in the market. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. And this is a wonderful watermelon salad that mm -hmm. I've tested with my uh, personal chef clients, Great. and they have loved it. It's been Good. approved. Yes. Taste tested and approved. So, this is our watermelon, mm -hmm. uh, seedless, and it's been uh, balled, like with a melon baller. And so, and you just took a melon. Yeah. Thing and took them out. Right? Yeah, I took them out. It's seedless, mm -hmm. so that makes things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And I'm adding here a trio of uh, of herbs. Mm -hmm. It's um, basil, cilantro, and mint. And mm. mint is the most uh, the greatest quantity of those. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of balsamic, mm -hmm. and we're going to sort of give these a toss. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that balsamic. Uh, it really helps um, bring the flavors, the does herbs it? to life. You're it like really to use does. The balsamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of it's it's a little sour, but it's also sweet. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, because as you can see, it hasn't turned them dark brown, which <laughs> you might worry about. Okay. So then we're gonna take um, some spinach, mm. um, which I've trimmed baby spinach, which I've taken the little uh, uh, ends off of. Oh, and you that's just the put part it in that gets there, yeah. stuck in your teeth. So I'm just using <laughs> a little I'm using a little um, ring here. You don't have to do this, but it makes. Uh, a really nice oh, presentation. presentation right. This is um, the uh, oil and uh, lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to drizzle that. Mm -hmm. um, then we are going to take some avocado slices mm -hmm. and we're going to lay them in. Right on top of the spinach yeah. there, huh? 
Yeah, this is a super ripe avocado. Ah, but that's the um, best kind. But that's the most delicious kind, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's a recipe that you want to buy your avocado a couple days in advance for so that they are ripe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I love avocados. I do too. Mm. Sorry, and they're so nutritious. Good for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put, and this is for each person you would do this. Oh, you take about one person. quarter. Yeah. Okay. You would take. Now, you know, if that just sounds like a big hassle to you, don't sweat it. I mean, just toss it all together. Mm -hmm. You can make this in advance? Um, I wouldn't make it too much in advance mm -hmm. um, because your your avocados are going to oxidize. In oh, fact, if you're going to yeah, slice be hard, much yeah. before, you want to sprinkle it with some lemon juice. Mm -hmm. All right, and that so will now, help. Yeah. But I wouldn't do it more than like an hour before your party, if oh, that. Oh, isn't and that then, pretty? And then that you're going to take your little bacon. Oh, yeah. And you're just going to... That is beautiful. Put your bacon on top, which is going to mm -hmm. give it some nice saltiness to offset that sweetness. So it's sweet, mm -hmm. savory, smoky, um, mm -hmm. really nice. That and a little bit of tartness. With the rest of the meal. Yes. Great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. So everything is completed. Yes. We have our meat, our corn, and our cucumber. That's it right. looks beautiful. Thank you so much. And now we're going to go <laughs> ahead and get it all onto a plate. OK. All right, so um, the way I recommend plating this yes. is by fanning out. And this would be like a serving for each person, pretty generous. Mm -hmm. um, so you would fan out your cucumbers on your plate. With your little uh, With your little carrots, carrot. if you have it. If you don't have carrots, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. But it adds color, but it's pretty. It's mm -hmm. cute. So now again, I'm going for this. If you mm -hmm. don't have it, don't sweat it. Just um, go ahead and put your corn down. Mm -hmm. But I do find these are really helpful mm -hmm. um, for making kind of simple food look Really yeah, it's nice. Really elegant. So elegant. It does. Yeah. It looks really nice. Okay. Know. Thank mm -hmm. you. So we'll go ahead. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of corn. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take, I've cut some of our meat from earlier. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, it, it's a, uh, a cut that. Uh, it, it's something that you would cut for the person before serving it. You I probably see. want to give them a slab of uh -huh. flank steak Very or nice. um, or uh, fajita meat. Mm -hmm. Looks nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you just do that, and uh, if it looks dry, just add a little bit of oil on top because if it looks dry, it probably is. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks okay. It turned out good. And so then we would mm -hmm. then take. Our little bit of garnish. Mm. That's beautiful. Perfect for and there you go. Think about summer, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would actually. That would probably be the direction nice. I would serve it in. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so don't go away. We're right back in the dining area. We're in the dining area now with our beautiful Asian influenced summer menu. So we view what you made first today, Jennifer. Sure. Well, first we started with uh, mm -hmm. refrigerator kimchi spiked pickles. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our cucumbers with our kimchi and our rice vinegar, our sesame oil, sugar. And uh, let that marinate for a couple of hours or overnight. Delicious. Mm-hmm. And then the corn. Yes, that was our corn with uh, onions and poblano, uh, poblano peppers mm -hmm. and uh, butter and salt. Mm -hmm. Simple, but really tasty. And our meat there. Yes, our meat, which is the uh, Korean barbecue inspired smoky sweet paste uh, mm. that we made with um, bean paste and red pepper paste, sugar, and for a little Latin influence, some oh, cumin. Oh yeah, that as, is nice. And then mm -hmm. some salt as mm -hmm. well. And you can make that either on the indoor grill or outdoor. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or even, you know, you have a skillet at home, you don't have a grill, you can it throw it in there fine. too. It works out just great. <laughs> and a salad. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, so this salad uh, was our herbed watermelon. Mm -hmm. uh, the herbs that I used uh, are um, some of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorite recipes is a Vietnamese summer roll. Oh, yes. And they I use like these that. spices mm -hmm. of mint, cilantro, and basil together. Oh, and it's wonderful. I see. So I tossed that, the watermelon with that, some vinegar, 
Um, we have our avocado slices and our spinach, which has got uh, some oil and some lemon juice on it. And then we topped it with some crispy bacon pieces for Beautiful. a little bit of saltiness. Very colorful. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm gonna taste my corn. Oh, please do. Mmm. Mm. That has a wonderful flavor to it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I do like corn, you know, I'm from Illinois, so <laughs> I'm used to it in the summer, but this is a nice way to prepare it. Yes. Very nice. So what would you drink with this? Think? Um, I think for the starter, I would start with a Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. And actually for the steak, mm -hmm. um, I would actually go more with that Latin flavor, the cumin, and go with like a Malbec. Um, oh, okay. And that would give it a lot of depth. Depth to it. Uh, oh, so that would be a red. So it would start with a white mm -hmm. and move to a red for mm -hmm. that. So uh, what other ethnic uh, items do you make in oh, your my repertoire? Gosh. I, I love everything. <laughs> People ask me what my favorite type is to cook, and I can't tell them because I have a really eclectic style. Um, I love everything from Asian, French, Latin. Um, so you can do a variety. All different kinds, yes, yes. I'll put up your information now yes. so people can get in contact with you. Yes, please and do. And it's contact Jennifer Cooper, and your phone number is 301-412-0019, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and there you have your website with uh, more information on it. Yes. And I'm gonna put up my website, because these recipes will be available on my website, that's chefsrecipes.org. So thank you so much for coming again. Thank you so much for having me again, Lindsay. I so much appreciate it. And remember, until next time, good eating.